how to create your own data queries for APIs and on-screen reports using the simple object designer. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video I'm going to show you how you create how you can create a query inside Business Central um, using the simple object designer. A query is a way to extract data from one or more tables uh, to either to be consumed uh, through an API of with external systems. Or now with BC24, you can actually expose the query as a on-screen report. And um, let's get going. Here is the Simple Object Designer. Simple Object Designer is a tool where you can customize and create uh, new functionality in Business Central without having to write a single line of code. The Simple Object Designer will do all the code writing for you. Um, but the, the focus, the thing you want to focus on in this video is to create a data query. And um, I have one here, so let's create another one. Um, let's create something with customer and customer ledger entries. So some sort of a list of what's happening on my customer. So we can, I can call it my customers, um, query need a name. Um, and I'll call it customer report. This one is important because this is how we're gonna find it afterwards in, um, in the UI. I can give it a category, uh, category called a customer. If I want this to be available as an API, all I have to do is gonna uh, check this box, then it's an API. Um, if I want it to be available in the UI for users to use that, that's a new thing in BC24, uh, I select what category this should show up in, and this should probably show up in reports and analysis. So that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so now I'm gonna define what's in my uh, query. And uh, in this case, I can create an element, I'll call it customer, and use table 18. I know the customer number, uh, the table numbers by heart, otherwise I would use the lookup, of course. Um, and then I can say, okay, let's, uh, let's figure out what fields I want. Um, so I want the customer number field. I want the name and I want the city. Um, I think that's all for this. So, so now I create a sim query. And if I, if we, we, if we stopped here, that would just be three columns and, and that's it. But let's, uh, Let's add another one here. So I'll go ledger entry. So we can see this now gets indented. Uh, and again, I know the numbers by heart, but the customer, let, let's do the this thing called cost a dot. Uh, maybe, got, you see, it's much easier for me to remember the number. Wow. Let's do cost ledger entry, 21. That's the one. Uh, so, so now I need to tell how I want this this thing to be related to that thing, uh, which is done with the SQL join type. And this is where it gets uh, a bit complicated. Um, here is a, an illustration uh, that might help. Um, so think about that we have two tables. In this case, A is the customer table, B is the customer ledger entries. And what our output of this is a flat list. So we, we get we get a list of rows and we gotta define what, what becomes a row. Um, so if we look at this one, then that's, that means that we get a, a row for each customer. In this case, we get a row for each customer ledger entry. Um, we can get a uh, get a row for whenever we have a match. Um, so the inner one, and and we can get the the combined where we get everything on each side. And it, it so so if there's there's a customer without ledger entries, that will still get a row with whatever column we select from the later entries will just be blank. Uh, so you have to decide and probably experiment because, you know, 
people who say that this is they they get this right on the first time they are usually lying uh, or boasting because uh, stuff like this sometimes you just got to try it out to oh that's what i want that's what, what i want but i think in this case i want a right join so i i want all the customer ledger entries uh, with customer information so let's uh, let's ask it to do a right outer join for the ledger entries i also want some uh, some fields so i want the posting date and i want the document type the document number the description and the amount uh, i think that those are those are those are good fields i close this and now i'm kind of done so i close this one again i close here and i hit publish and I, so yes to publish to this environment what's happening now is that the simple object designer starts writing code in the background that's what's happening now behind the silly small messages here it's writing writing all the code and we got an error because we actually forgot something uh, so now it tells us hey the property data uh, item link must be set but the, what does that mean well what we forgot here is that if i go back to this one we forgot to tell how these two we we told how we want them to be related but we actually did not tell how they what fields they should be related by so i click filters here and tell that okay so if i look at fields in the customer ledger entries i'll select customer number and then i want to link that to the customer number field in the customer table. So now it knows how the relationship is between those two tables. So I close this thing, I close it, I close it again, I close, and then I hit publish. And the simple object designer starts writing the code again uh, to see, huh, let's uh, let's write, write, write based on all you have written and all you have defined. And in this case, we did not get any errors. So, so after it was done writing the code, it compiled the code into an app file. And the app file uh, was then uploaded to Microsoft. And this is where we uh, started. So, so now the app file is sent to Microsoft and it goes through what is known as package validation. Package ma validation means that Microsoft is validating that hey, this is an app and, and it's, you're not just uploading a picture of, from your summer vacation, you're actually uploading an app and the app uh, complies to all the, the regulations and, and how an app should be. So it tests that, that the content of the app is, is good and when it's convinced that hey this is a good app then that app is actually sent to a deployment service uh, and all this happens behind the scene uh, on, in the microsoft cloud so uh, as soon as the app is validated it sends to deployment and then it will get deployed to your environment here i'm running uh, the simple object sign in demo mode so you could everything i do here you can do also in a sandbox if you want to deploy your app to a production environment you have to get a license to a simple object signer uh, and you can uh, you can use the links below to do that we are just about to waiting for management service deployment to complete so our um our app here is almost deployed we're in the last few seconds typically this process takes a minute and a half and there you go it's done so i click ok and now because i talk so much i forgot what we call it we call it customer report so now i can because i am bc24 i can search for customer report and see if we have that on the report and analysis so i click that and this one opens here is all our data we can see that we have uh, all the customer ledger entries. If I click here, we now get this as a, a analysis uh, report. Uh, so we just created a report. 
uh, in uh, in less than than ten minutes, we created a a, a customer uh, report, and, and and now we can use all the uh, the analysis mode things uh, if we want to. Um, if we checkbox API, we would also be able to uh, to get all this output into Power uh, Power BI or Power Apps or wherever else you want to exp- uh, consume data through APIs. So that's how easy it is to to create a query in uh, in Business Central if you're using the simple object designer. Uh, if you want to know more, there are links below. You can try it out in a sandbox. Uh, and, you know, happy uh, creating, happy creating. You know, well, good luck creating queries with Business Central and the Simple Object Designer.